Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar on enabling observability in Kong API Gateway Platform. In this webinar, I'll be walking you through a series of steps about how to enable observability using open source tools like Fluentbit and Open Telemetry Collector. A little bit about me, myself John Williams, and I'm a technology architect specializing on API management and API Gateway functionalities. I am one of the recognized Kong champions within the Kong community. And here you can find the link for my LinkedIn profile in case if you want to get in touch with me. Let me set some context on Kong API Gateway. Kong Gateway is a lightweight, fast, and flexible cloud native API Gateway. So, any API Gateway provides a point of entry for all your APIs that are behind your enterprise. An API gateway will also address your cross-cutting concerns like authentication, monitoring, security, and even caching. Con gateway runs in front of any RESTful API and can be extended through modules and plugins. So this pluggable architecture makes this an extensible so where in case of a particular functionality or requirement is not satisfied, you can create your own custom plugin and then extend those functionality into the API Gateway. Kong Gateway provides a variety of deployment modes and in this webinar, I'll be walking you through a hybrid deployment mode. So where Kong is deployed with a control plane and a data plane. Your data plane will be your runtime traffic. Kong has a huge uh, support on the community and this is, it is one of the leading open source gateways that are available currently in the market. One of the major characteristics that why people are moving towards Kong API gateway is because of its high throughput and a low latency provided on the gateway itself. So to more and more on the Kong API gateway, so visit konghq.com. The observability and monitoring will usually coexist in an ecosystem. And the major difference between these two are monitoring, as many of you know, is a traditional approach of collecting and analyzing data on the system performance. But observability goes a step further. It's about understanding why behind the data, the root causes of the issue, and how different parts of a system are interacting. So the first pillar of observability is metrics. These are quantitative measurements that tell us how our system is performing. So we are talking about things like response time, CPU usage, memory consumption, and error rates. So metrics provide a real-time snapshot of system health, allowing us to identify bottlenecks and potential problems. These metrics can be anything that are on the monitoring signals, right? So metrics can be your latency metric, or the traffic metric, or even error metrics. The second pillar is all about logs. So these are the chronological records of events happening within your system. Logs capture everything from successful transactions to error messages and user actions. While metrics provide a high level view, logs offer a granular perspective, helping us to understand the sequence of events and even pinpoint the root cause of the issues. The final pillar is the traces. These map the flow of requests through your system, showing how different components interact. Traces usually provide a visual representation of how a specific user action travels across your servers and databases. So they're like following a breadcrumb trail to understand the complete journey of a request. And as per Google's SRA principles, so these are the four golden signals that one has to monitor to make sure the system is highly available. The latency, it's a metric of the time it takes to service a request from end to end. So that is the request originating from your user uh, application till the request goes through your API gateway to your microservice and even to your database systems. Traffic measures how much of demand is being placed on a system. So this is usually your transaction per second. And errors are like, so based on the number of transactions coming in, how many rate, how many requests are failing with errors that are explicit or implicit. 
An explicit error is something that we get from an REST API like final error or 401 or 403. And an implicit error is like kind of a business error where we are not able to find the data on the database that we usually send in the body of the message. And the last signal is the saturation. So where it is a measure of your system's health contributing to your CPU, your memory, and even your disk IO operations performances. The tools that will be used to enable observability in our Kong API gateway platform will be Fluentbit, which is a lightweight open source metric agent for logs, metrics, and it is built for performance. Now, this is designed for speed. It collects events from diverse sources without bogging down your system. Second one is your open telemetry, which is a tool to create and manage telemetry data, such as traces, that can be used with a broad variety of backends. This helps you streamline your monitoring activity by routing all telemetry through a single endpoint. Let's see how we are going to instrument Kong API Kit with all the observability tools that we have to do. So in this topology, so I have installed Kong in hybrid mode, which has Kong control plane and the Kong data plane. The Kong data plane is the place where all your runtime traffic will be coming, where the API requests are saved, and all your metrics are being captured and everything. So in this picture, you see like the Kong data plane that presented here, which runs on two pods having I mean, Kong proxies, and they are emitting logs as they always do. And I also enabled a Prometheus plugin, which is a Kong plugin which I just capture metrics for the Kong data plane system that is running. I've also enabled an open telemetry plugin, which I just to capture the telemetry data required for tracing the particular transaction that is going to the Kong data plane, which is the runtime. And on the default namespace of the Kubernetes, so I am running the Fluent bit and also the open telemetry collector. The flow on bit will take care of uh, aggregating the logs and even the Prometheus metrics from the Kong data plane. And open telemetry will be taking care of capturing all the traces and then forwarding it to the our centralized logic system. So here I have used flow on bit the tail as the input processor and the scrape for the Prometheus. Let me show you the setup that I currently have in my local. So I'm running a mini cube cluster and I have also running the Kong on the hybrid model, which is the Kong will have a control plane and a data plane. The data plane will be serving all my traffic. And on the default namespace, you can see I'm running my fluent bit agent and also the Open telemetry agent. So, flow and width agent will be responsible for capturing the logs and metrics, and open telemetry is for only the traces. Let me show you the configurations that are set for the flow and width. So, here you can see the flow and width is configured with all the inputs, the processor, and outputs. So, for the logs, I'm using the tail as an input processor, which actually passes all the logs that are coming on the containers. And by default, it, it captures all the logs, and I have given an input path which actually removes all the system specific uh, container logs. And the second part is the Prometheus scraper, which is again an input processor which actually captures the data from this COM data plane, which is running on 8100 port. And it actually queries this particular endpoint slash metrics and then get captures all the metrics being entered by the Kong data plane. And finally, on the output side, you can see I'm sending all these logs and metrics to this particular endpoint, which is log at an API for the new relic, along with an API key, which is required for authentication. And similarly, for the Prometheus uh, scraper, I'm sending all the data to this metric API endpoint, 
which will store all the metrics for us. Similarly, so we have a config file for the OPL metro agent so where we configure the receivers, so which is running on 4318. And then once it receives all the traces from this, it actually exports it into an endpoint, which is again the open telemetry endpoint for the new relic along with the API key. So this is the setup for our fluent bit and the open telemetry collector. Let's look at the con configurations that we have done for this particular demo. So I created two services here. So one is which talks to two backends here. So one is on HTTP bin slash anything. So this is the route I used for sending traffic. And for this service to be accessed via Kong API, we created a route here. And this route talks about slash anything. And then, so we have enabled uh, two plugins for us. One is a request transformer. So where I added this to, just to add an additional header that we want to send to the backend system. So you can see here, I have added this client test URL. And the other plugin was Prometheus, which is used to send the metrics to the Prometheus scraper, which is being listened on the fluent bit. And I have enabled only a few of those metrics that are required for me. So latency metrics and band and status code metrics. So you can enable additional metrics based on your requirements. And the third plugin is the open telemetry plugin. So which I have enabled so that whatever traces that I am creating from the Kong runtime data plane, it is actually being sent to this particular service endpoint here. So this is the hotel uh, collector endpoint, which is running on our mini cube cluster on the default namespace. So whenever this plugin generates any traces, it will forward the tra these traces to this particular endpoint. And once the hotel collector collects this particular traces, it will forward it to the new relic system. Now let's see how the data that we captured using the fluent bit and the open telemetry character are being collected in the centralized system. And for this demo, I'm using new relic. So this is the metric data that we captured from the fluent bit, which is being forwarded here. So as you can see here, we are capturing the, all the metrics coming from the com. And here you can see the number of requests that are getting hit on a total between the time frame that I have run the traffic and uh, the other metric that I will be interested in the request latency. Right? So where this talks about the total request latency that is being happening from the from the origination of the API call till the response it gets. And then this will talk about the upstream latency, which is our the backend restful API for which the, we are proxying the traffic. Now let's see the logs that we have captured using our fluent bit again. So this is the API that I hit from my one of the insomnia, which is the RESTful client. So as you can see here, I'm able to query the logs based on the information that are given here. And all these are getting recorded here. And not only the API traffic, we'll be also seeing the internal errors that are happening within the system. So like here, since I'm using the open source container, it is complaining me about the common licenses not available. So all this information captured here will be helpful when we try to debug some issues that are happening in the system, right? So this log will show you about like what the status code that we have got for this particular request is 200 and then how much time it took for this particular API. So it is 526 milliseconds. And from, from where the, the, the request got originated. And so, so all these information are being captured in our logs. Now the final bit is the traces. So where we are be able to trace the end-to-end -end transaction that's happening from the Kong request till the Kong response is being sent. So here you can see the total traces that are being sent for each of those API calls that we have hit from the request. And uh, 
So this is how we can see that each span of request that are happening in the Kong life cycle. So here it is shows like there are six spans available. So starting with the Kong router, and then we have enabled two plugins. Right? So one is the again open telemetry, and then it's again one of the request transform. But so it shows that on each step how much latency that it took. So as you can see here. So from the com side, it took very less than 0 0.02 milliseconds here. And then once it finished to com load balancer, it stops with the backend. So that's where we have incurred the latency. Now, once we instrument our com API gateway with all the observability tools, fluent bit and open telemetry. How can we make sure that COM system will be highly available and it can be observed? So take an example, assume your users are experiencing high response times on the applications. Now, the steps that we can take is to look into the metrics and identify which API is giving a high latency response. And then we can use logs to identify like why there is a high latency on the particular API. And then we can also use traces to identify like at, at which point of the com processing or at the downstream processing where the where there is a latency. Another example is assume you get an alert that error rates are breached at the show, which is 20 percentage, which is the starting of any system like where it can possibly be like the system may be experiencing some issues. Right? So now, the steps that we can do is to identify if the error is on a single API or across the different APIs so using the metrics that we capture, which is the latency and the error metrics. And then identify if the system is saturated on resources. So we can use metrics like CPU usage or the memory usage on the COM platform. And then if there are such issues happening where there is a resource crunch, then we can maybe take actions to auto scale the system for maybe add more capacity to the system to make it more highly available. Thank you so much for listening into this webinar. So below here, you can find the references that I've used. So this blog post talks about how to deploy your Kong gateway in hybrid mode. And the second one, GitHub, uh, is more of all the code and configuration related to all this pretty demo. So you can find the number of repositories here. So you can go and refer this and in case if you guys have any questions, please do let me know. And thank you so much for your time. Have a nice day.